In your wickedness, you have broken the ancient commandments and crafted a bond with one of the light. Our laws are clear. They demand you be eternally imprisoned. As for the impure child, she must be kept from the path of the dark arts forever. Okay, today we're going to play Bayonetta, developed by Platinum Games and directed by Hideki Kamiya, who directed the Devil May Cry games, Metal Gear Rising, Vanquish, you know the guy. Um, this is the best game he's ever made, as far as I'm concerned. This is the best spectacle fighter character action game, whatever you want to call the genre. This is the best of it, as far as I'm concerned. So, let's start the game. We, Whenever we play a game like this, we usually play it on the highest difficulty setting, but hard just means you see a lower variety of enemies, because what it basically does is replaces a bunch of enemies in the game with higher level enemies. So you see, like, a lot of one or two enemies, but not very much else. So it's actually less interesting to watch, because there's less variety. The highest difficulty setting just takes which time out of the game. Other than that, it's functionally identical to hard mode. So we're actually going to play on normal, because I think it's the most interesting to watch. So now, let's see the prologue, where we get a bit of backstory on what's going on. There's a narrator. He's quite good. existed two European clans who served as overseers of history for the powers that be. The Umbra Luches, dwellers of the darkness, and the Lumen Sages, controllers of the light. The clans paid each other great respect, and their efforts to maintain the balance between them defended the just passage of time. Yet one day, that balance was toppled. So don't worry too much about what's happening gameplay-wise. There's a tutorial in the actual stage after this. If you're looking, you'll see a few enemies that are going to show up later. You'll get an early glimpse the of them. The harmonious clans fell into disagreement and stoked the flames of hatred against each other, resulting in an era of strife. The conflict between the Umbra and the Lumen threw all of Europe into a chaotic loop of battle, ambush, assassination, and casualty. It was truly a gruesome war. Despite the tremendous radiance of God shining upon them, the Lumen Sages were gradually weakened by the assault of the secretive Dark Witches. Years after the balance was lost, the war had ended. Favor. Which is a shame, as far as I'm concerned, because we learn about the Lumen Sages, as you might assume, and based on what we see of them, they're fucking fabulous. Unlike the Umbra Witches, who like go around making, wearing outfits made out of hair and shit, which just sounds uncomfortable, as far as I'm concerned. Very itchy. Uh, there's, there's more narration. It's coming. I promise, it's coming. It's coming. Their victory was short-lived. Fearing the witch's dark abilities, humans began to condemn the remaining Umbra. 
They launched the witch hunts, rounding up the battle-weary witches with little resistance and subjugating those who wished to continue the struggle. Human faith in the miracles of their god pushed the witch hunts further, and soon the Umbra witches, keepers of the darkness, were extinguished from the earth. All but one. I can only really assume that must mean the other Umbra witches were completely useless. Because based on what Bayonetta can do, the human should not be, have stood a chance at all. Granted, Bayonetta is a bit of an exceptional case for Umbra witches, but even still, like, some stuff gets done with this witch magic. Spooky. Uh, so, then we get to do the prologue. You might notice we haven't really said much about the actual game so far. That's because this cutscene is going to tell you everything you need to know about the game. It's very unique. You'll like it. It's certainly memorable, if nothing else. You'll like it. As soon as it loads. Which will be, which will be quite soon. It looks like Humpty Dumpty's taking his last fall. Even Oleg Man the Destroyer gets scrambled in the end, right? You know, I still don't get why the hell you dragged me out here for these things. I just drop off the merchandise. Hey, bet you can't guess what today is. Reading the good Lord's book ain't gonna do much. People have been waiting for this asshole to get whacked for ages. Please. Hell, look around. There's no love lost for old Humpty Dumpty. But you gotta keep the outfit happy. We don't take care of him, they take care of us. And I prefer my shoes made out of rubber, not concrete. But hey, it's that kind of town. Without good-hearted souls like us to put these bastards six feet under, where'd society be? Of course, the pay's not bad either. <laughs> Jesus, you really get into this shit, don't you? If it were me, I'd be praying he ends up barbecue. Or at least sunny side up. <laughs> you can keep praying, but the only way this guy's meeting the Lord is if God's hungry for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of hungry, we done here. My kids are baking me a birthday cake tonight. Cute little fuckers, I tell you what. Well then, adios. What the fuck? 
Doctor here? For this douchebag? Ah! I hate this damn light! I can't see a thing! Oh! What the there? Ain't they? You hearing me? You, you can see them, can't you? I see them. They are instruments of God, descending upon his heavenly rays to Earth. Oh, my God! Dear Lord, grant us guidance, and keep safe the souls of our loved ones for all eternity. Tired. Let me tuck you in. you get out of here. You die, and I'm gonna have to go back in that hole chasing after the money you owe me. Do you naughty little angels deserve a good banking? Cheeky. Throwing me these cheap toys. Don't worry about quality. I've got quantity. Guns! 
you're just gonna watch. I'm putting you to the work. That was your last call. No more shots from me, Bayonetta. As there's music, I'll keep on dancing. And that's what Bayonet is about right there. Um, and it's time for the tutorial. We can punch. We can also kick. It more or less equates to punch being light attack and kick being heavy attack. Um, so yeah, that's what Bayonet is about. Uh, we've met our ensemble cast. Well, I say we've met our ensemble cast. We haven't met someone, and we don't see Enzo much past to this stage. Uh, Rodan we see a lot of, though. Poor Enzo. Doesn't have very much luck. Uh, I mean, he's kind of an asshole, as you might have noticed, but he seems alright, like, deep, deep down. You know, he cares about his kids, if nothing else. He's actually got a car, and his personalized license plates are his kids' names, Ed and Edna. Very, very inventive names, I know. And this is which time? Basically slows down time. And enemies are easier to stagger. I think they take slightly more damage, but the, the main thing is that uh, it slows down time. We do not have everything just yet. We don't have access to the magic gauge, which does a few things. Also, halos are in the game. They're the currency. Um, the magic gauge does a few things, but the main thing it does is the torture attacks. So we can't use those yet. We also don't have Wicked Leaves yet. Uh, if you're wondering what those are, and during the prologue you might have noticed some very large hands and feet showing up, those were Wicked Leaves. Uh, basically, it's just gonna take us longer to kill things because we don't have them yet, because they're, they're combo enders that do a lot of damage, basically. So, yeah, that's what Bayonetta is about, though. Beating up angels. Uh, very unusual looking angels, not exactly the traditional rendition. I've taken damage, the game's gonna be quite upset about me for that one. Uh, you get graded based on combo, time taken, and damage taken. And if you get platinum in all of them, you get pure platinum for that fight, or verse, as they're called. And it, it's uh, quite difficult to get pure platinum for every stage. Which I did at one point do. It took a very long time to do, but I did do it eventually. These angels are not... Uh, important enough to get their own intro, like the affinities, but they're called cherubs. And you're probably like, oh, right, of course. If you hold the button down, you get to do something with your weapons. Not every weapon in the game is a gun, so they don't all shoot, but they do all do something when you hold the button down. And I like how this one tells you how to do it like three times. So this does slightly more damage than just shooting the gun, which we can do. Uh, I didn't talk about that. No difference between the punch or kick version, but I have to imagine the kick version is more uh, popular somehow. Uh, we can still just fire the gun. The guns don't do very much damage. They're basically just for extending combos more than anything else. And there's quite a few weapons in the game, which we all unlock all of them through Rodan in a fairly interesting way. But we'll see that when we get to it. Uh, so we haven't really been told why we're doing this, but Enzo in the next cutscene is going to give us some fairly awkward exposition. Well, awkwardly delivered, I mean, exposition that explains what we're up to. Um, but the, the gist is angels are not very nice people, basically. Which y you might have noticed from the opening, because those guys that stabbed themselves, you might have noticed the shadow in the wall had uh, these guys coming out of them. The uh, Lumen Sages are not exactly good guys. Not that the Emperor Witches are much better. The Lumen Sages are heaven and the Witches are hell. So, you know, not nice people, really. I'm not dead yet! Not... You can't take me like this! It's against regulations, I tell you! I find this very funny because it tells you how to jump right here, as if you... I don't know who exactly does that whole thing and doesn't try to jump at least once, but... Ah! Damn it, who did that? I just bought the damn thing! Ah! 
Haven't you figured it out yet? There's no quarter for you in this world. Uh, so, as you might have noticed, uh, people in the real world, pe regular people, can't see what's happening because you go into Purgatorio to fight the uh, angels. And they can see the world getting fucked up, but they can't see the fighting that's actually happening. Taking some damage, the game's gonna be so upset with me now. It's a platinum game, it doesn't really want you to take damage or use items. Uh, you might have also noticed all the angels are uh, fairly meaty looking underneath their, I assume, porcelain skin. They are all quite ugly underneath. There are a few angels, but uh, there's, there's some that like never show up. There's an angel that literally only shows up in one stage, and never again, and it's quite a short stage. And it doesn't show up much on that stage. It's very strange. It's very strange. <gasps> Took damage. Oh god. Oh, Rodan should be paying me for even touching these toys. You have any idea how much this is gonna cost to fix? How the fuck do I always get wrapped up in this shit? Hmm. Engine still purrs nicely. Now. About this little thing you've been looking into for me, Enzo. Let's have a quick chat. See? This is why I told you I was going home. I just got held up in the air by some invisible things, and you want an intelligence briefing? It never stops with you! You keep bellyaching like that, and you're liable to wake Eggman from the dead. And I don't think either of you would like that. Uh -huh. Catch you later, Bayonetta. Something tells me you're gonna need a rush on our special project before this shit hits the fan. Wait, Rodan. What about Eggman? Such a popular chap. I bet they hate him down there as much as you did when he was up here. We just need to make sure he won't come. We never find out who this is, by the way. Out. Nothing a flower bed can't fix. Fill her up. You heard the man. Finish up in five minutes, or you're walking home to your cake and candles. What? Don't you leave me here! Feel free to assume that it's Dr. Robotnik. We never get told otherwise, so we might as well go with that.